Okay, so this is part two of extended techniques. Should have checked my batteries earlier. Rookie mistake. Sorry, folks. So um, maybe what I'll do is we'll start with uh, some things um, with the brushes, and we'll start with the snare drum, and we'll move to different surfaces because, of course, um, not only the way drums and cymbals respond is different, but also the heights and angles they are, are different, which can make physical things either easier or more challenging to do. So we'll just start with the snare drum because that's where I started the other day when I was thinking about this. So one of the things I was thinking about, and this is a, not that odd a technique, is the whole idea, and I don't know what you call it, where you're rubbing the brush handle along the rim of the drum and then it makes the, the brushes sort of engage in this sort of way. You, you, again, people like Philly Joe would do this and stuff. It's a great effect. You can play it, you know, slower or faster or longer. And, you know, you can play grooves that way. You know, you could, you know, something like, you know. You know, it's not that hard to control. Um, it's a really nice sound. And so one of the things I try to do in my practicing a lot is do a sort of a thing where I go, well, what would happen if I did this now? So just to, to try and think beyond of what you might normally do. So one of the things I thought about is, well, we could do the same effect, but I could turn the brush the other way. So now you can still sort of rub, you know, have the handle along the rim and, and have the wires extending past. But if you do this now, you get the effect of the brush handle making this effect. It's a little louder. It's um, maybe more of a singular sound than a multiple of sounds. It's just sort of cool. Um, and with that in mind, I was also thinking about the brush handle. Well, also, you can just use the brush handle like you're pretending it's a drum, and you'll get a very sort of thin sound. It's sort of cool. I first heard Tootie Heath do this on a McCoy Tyner record, and then he would, I think he was playing Night in Tunisia, and then for the Latin parts, he would play, you know, with, with the, the butt end of the... Uh, brush and then when it came time for the swing sections he would flip the brushes over and play them more in a standard brush way it's brilliant great idea to heath a great creative player and again not maybe known as an avant-garde player but obviously somebody who thought about different sound sources okay so um so you can also play it that way as i was saying but also you can do things like that's a great sound where you're going around the rim and getting that sound and i'm also accidentally getting a sound where I'm getting harmonics out of the out of the snare drum. Sorry, <laughs> bear with me. Camera person's not too with it sometimes. Well, there's a good one, right? So, you this works better with sticks, but what you can do, a lot of people get harmonics out of the out of the cymbal, and we'll talk about the ways to do that. That's more of a standard sound, but you can also get harmonics out of drums, and it basically. And I got this from uh, Dylan Dander, Vanderschift uh, in. Uh, in uh, Van, who's a great drummer in Vancouver. But what you can do is you can start to rub around the rim of the drum and you start to get those harmonics. You can hear those coming out. And again, it comes out better with sticks, but I just thought, because I'm starting with brushes, I will show you that you can do it with brushes as well. It happens on a lot of drums, not just snare drum. You can, yeah, yeah not getting it. So, and that's the other thing about some of these techniques is you don't always nail them. There's, there's some degree of um, randomness to it, which can be cool, actually. It might have better off on the floor, Tom. Yeah, I'm getting a bit. Yeah, there, it's starting to engage a bit. All I'm saying is not just the snare drum works for this, although it hasn't worked very well for me today. Okay, so those are some of the things I was thinking about uh, with the snare drum uh, and brushes. Let's let's look at something like the hi-hat and brushes. So I was also trying some of those sounds. Um, so again, that sort of rubbing. So that's a cool sound. It's very subtle and quiet. It's funny, even, even the brushes are hitting the, the cymbal next to the hi-hat, see? So that's sort of cool. Again, it's, it's, it would only be for a very quiet sort of section or something. You're not gonna, you're not gonna hear it, but it's cool because it's so delicate. Um, and again, you can flip it over. It doesn't work quite as well as on the snare, but you can get some of that effect, right? 
Um, you know, and again, all those sort of those sort of sounds you can get. Um, you can. Uh, I was doing this in a solo the other day. The great thing about a hi hat is that you can always stick things between the two symbols and and press down harder or less hard and you get all those effects, right? This is a great there's a lot of cool things that can be done with the hi hat. You can pull it out. You know, things like that. Um, you know, and again, you can experiment with doing that rubbing thing in between the symbols, right? It's hard to see there, you know? Uh, or the other way with the other end. These are just sort of random, you know, effects that you can play around with. Okay, so I think that's most of the brush ones I wanted to talk about. So let's go back to some with sticks. So, um, uh, or is there any other simple ones? No, I don't. Oh, well, yeah, that's true. Sorry. One more thing. Another thing I was, I was noticing, too, is you can do a lot of things with the bells of symbols because the... Uh, you know, the, the, the shape of the symbol changes at a point. So you can sort of get the sound of the brush handle, you can get the sound of the, the scraping sound, you can get those all together. That, where there's a flat ride. The other thing that's cool too is you can, you can rub along the symbol and then hit it right in the center where the stand is and you can get some cool effects. This is sort of random. I don't know if you want to do this on a super funky groove or something. It might be sort of more, again, where you're just trying to get some sort of effect or sustain sound and when you're playing rubato rather than trying to play groove. Okay, so let's go to the sticks quickly. So um, one of the things I was noticing is, um, and I get this effect another way, but I was discovering this yesterday, is this is a cool one, just the... So that's a cool one. So you're just playing like you're going to play a rim clip. And then you start rubbing the stick around. You can do it on the other drum. The other drum. Sorry, floor top. You can obviously do this off your right hand, too. Um, you know, you know those, those sort of effects. Those are cool. Um, that's a nice sound. You can also do that with two sticks, which uh, it's going to be hard for me to do. But where you sort of, oh, let's see. If we can, yeah, you do this. Right? You rub them together like that. So, sorry, that's a little rough run, one-handed. Okay, so, and then, um, those sort of things you can also do, you know, on a cymbal. Like we were doing with a brush. I like that one. Uh, you can also uh, get the, the harmonics out of the cymbal. I learned this from a great drummer in Montreal, Pierre, Pierre Tonquet, many years ago. You're almost holding the stick like a pencil, and then you go sort of right up the, the, the straight up the cymbal, or straight down the cymbal, I guess. Doesn't work quite as well, but... Right? And they'll really give you that harmonic. So that's a great effect. And you can control it, and you can do it with either hand. Uh, you can do them as short sounds. You can mute it while you're doing it. Here, I'll try to mute it with one hand. Right? So now, I'm actually using my hand to mute it, and that's making a difference. Uh, speaking of muting, this is something I like to do as well, is you can use, you know, do that trick where you're sort of using the finger technique and playing both sides of the stick. Which again is a fairly standard technique now, but one thing I discovered which is nice is when you do that, your knuckles are right there and you can actually use them to mute the cymbal while you're doing it. So you can go... That's sort of cool. Let's see on this cymbal. Right, you know. So it's a way of, of muting the cymbal with one hand. Of course you can also catch it with one hand. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, this is a fun one. Let's see if I can do it one-handed. 
No, you know what? For this last thing, which is just a, a whole series of things I've been doing, I'm going to show you the last one in the next video because I'm going to have to set up the stand because I, I have to have two hands to do this. So I hope you're getting something out of this. Um, you know, feel free, free to experiment with different sounds and I'll show you the last one on the next video. Thank you so much.